Hello and welcome to video two of the uh, immune system for 2402 lecture. Now is when it gets complicated. So here we have the adaptive uh, defenses or the adaptive or specific portion of your immune system. So now the word adaptive is probably most appropriate here because what it does is that it your this part of your immune system is able to uh, identify and then later recognize and destroy uh, individual pathogens. So if you get exposed to a flu virus, let's say, uh, and you catch the flu in, in September, you're probably not going to catch that same virus again later because your immune system will have adapted to it. Now the next year, flu is a weird one because it changes a lot. And this is the thinking behind uh, herd immunity also. So let's just say this coronavirus thing, if people can develop immunity to it and it doesn't mutate very rapidly, you should be immune to it once you've caught it. Now that's a big if, so don't go quote me on that. All right, uh, there are two components of your adaptive immune system and you can see them here. The humoral immunity, that's what I'd call it, and cell-mediated immunity. Humoral immunity is the one that uses antibodies. So antibodies are uh, molecules, which we'll see in more detail later, that uh, are uh, built to suit particular attackers. So your, your B cells, these lymphocytes, make antibody, and we'll, we'll see what that does. And this is mostly like things like bacteria and fungi and uh, snake venom and, uh, you know, internal parasites and stuff like that. Cell-mediated immunity is where the cells themselves attack your cells. So this is critical here. Humoral immunity is your, your antibodies found in your humors. That's what they call it that. Cell-mediated means that the cells do the job. So you're going to have uh, T cells that directly attack your cell. So what we're doing here is defending ourselves against things that are inside of our cells, viruses, bacteria, uh, uh, parasites, things that can get in their cancer. And like I said, they can, they attack directly, but they can also produce a lot of chemicals, which we'll see. So what are they recognizing? Well, specifically, uh, these guys are going to adapt to and counter antigens. So antigens are uh, antibody generating molecules. So this is going to be a, a recognizable molecular signal on a cell or in solution or whatever. And if an antigen is going to be com what they call complete, if if you get uh, a virus, let's say you get a, a bacterial infection, if the bacterium has antigens on its surface, which it does, but if that bacterium has antigens that are immunogenic and reactive, they're called complete antigens. You'll see that others are incomplete. Well, what do you gotta do to be complete? Well, you have to be immunogenic, generate an immune response. You have to be reactive. And that is your lymphocytes uh, and antibody will do something to it. So you've got to generate a response and then be able to be destroyed. Uh, incomplete antigens are only immune, they're, they're reactive, but they're only immunogenic. They only generate a response when they're combined with uh, uh, your, your self molecule. So if you've got, let's say you're allergic to poison ivy. Well, the poison ivy gets on you and it's going to... Uh, become incorporated in some of your own molecules and in that way develop, uh, cause you to have an immune reaction. Now on, this is still antigens, but on the antigens themselves, there's only a small region that actually determines the immune response and that's called the antigenic determinant. So it's not the whole bacteria that you respond to, but uh, a particular chemical on the surface. And you have uh, what they call self antigens. You'll see, maybe I'll say self and non-self, but self antigens are ones that you find on your cells. So you're an organism, you've got cells with molecules on the surface and the ones that are recognizable are called self antigens. Now here's where we get into another big term. Our self antigens, the recognizable chemical signatures on our cells are called major histocompatibility complex proteins. Big term, major histocompatibility complex proteins. And I will just say MHCs from now on, okay? So I'll just say MHC proteins. There are two classes of these MHC proteins. Class one is found on almost all your cells. So your skin cells, your liver cells, your brain cells, your muscle cells, your bone cells, etc. Your red blood cells are accepted. 
So this is like the identifier on all of your cells, except for red blood cells, that says, I'm part of you. Class two MHCs are special protein molecules that are found only on immune system cells that are gonna be using those MHCs to alert the rest of your immune system. And that will make sense later, I hope. So we just looked at uh, the basics of adaptive immune system right here and some antigens and what they've got going for them. Now let's move on to the cells of our immune system. So we're gonna go right with uh, B and T lymphocytes, B and T cells, and their life cycles. I've got a nice numbered thing here, all right? And B and T cells both kind of go through the same process, uh, the same steps, different specific processes. Both cells originate in the red bone marrow. Uh, they both mature. B cells mature in the B bone marrow. T cells mature in the T thymus. During this maturation process, they've got a couple of steps that they have to under they have to pass. They have to prove their immunocompetence. So the cell uh, gets exposed to an antigen and it has to be able to bind to it. It has to be able to recognize that antigen as a thing that it's a, that's a signal to it and to bind to that thing. This next little picture here kind of has that. So the next page has uh, binding to and uh, failing to bind to, but I'll give you the steps here first. You have to be able to recognize one and you have to be self-tolerant. So that means you have to recognize your antigens, so your MHCs, but you don't attack them. If a given cell recognizes a self MHC, they survive. And this is called positive selection. So you passed your first test. You are immunocompetent. The next step is if they bind too tightly. So if they get too aggressive, right? Then they're gonna be removed. They're gonna be negatively selected. So you, it's like a step process here. You, you pass the first step of immunocompetence and you become, and you are kept around. If you don't bind, you're gotten rid of. Then the next step is if you don't let go, you get a little too freaky, right? Then they're gonna cut you loose. They're gonna kill you. Uh, turns out that only about 2% of all uh, lymphocytes that go into the process survive. So there's, it's a real elite group. Once you survive this maturation process, whether it's in the bone marrow or in the thymus, you're gonna move on to secondary lymphoid organs like your uh, lymph nodes and your, uh, your spleen, uh, as you remember from, from the lymphatic system. In the lymph nodes, they're going to encounter non-self antigens. This is where you, your lymph nodes are where most of these cells are gonna get their first glimpse of the enemy. So if you've gotten a bacterial infection or a viral infection or whatever, you got bit by a snake, um, they're gonna be hiding out your, your, your um, white blood cells will be hiding out in your lymph nodes and waiting for your lymph to bring in some, some, uh, some enemies, right? So you, you, you get exposed, these cells get exposed to bacteria and they, they get switched on, right? And being activated is kind of a complicated process, but I'll, sum I'll summarize it right here. Once you get activated, you're gonna make loads, or your body's gonna make loads of copies of those guys. So kind of like, you know, the clone army in, in Star Wars, but you're gonna make multiple copies of that same cell. And if you're, let's say, a B cell, one that makes antibody, you recognize a given antigen, you change, it changes you as a result. And when you make millions and billions of copies of these guys during a process called proliferation, uh, you're gonna make millions and billions of copies of cells that are already wrecked. So it's kind of like cell, just one individual cell gets exposed to one individual bacterium. It changes that, that uh, B cell a little bit then that B cell divides and divides and divides and all of its offspring can also recognize that one bacterium. Each cell doesn't have to be exposed. You, you expose the, the ancestor cell, it divides, you know, lots and lots and lots of times and you get a bunch of daughter cells and daughter, granddaughter and great granddaughter cells and so on that also recognize that bacterium. So you make an army of, of fighters.
um, <clears throat> differentiation here, you're going to proliferate, make copies, and differentiate. When you differentiate, it means becoming different, and you're going to develop into what they call effector cells, like for B cells, that would be the ones that produce antibody, or memory cells, and uh, those guys are going to hang around for decades and protect you against that bacterium later or that virus later. So here's that composite image right here. Here's the life cycle on the left. So here we are in the bone marrow. And if you're a T cell, you go off to the thymus to, to mature. If you're a B cell, you stay in the bone marrow. Then you end up at lymph nodes where you get exposed to antigen and you make clone after clone after clone, excuse me, get released in the blood and hopefully fight the infection. Over here is kind of a little breakdown of positive and negative selection. This cell up here fails to recognize uh, the MHC. So see how it's not bound on there very well? So this T cell is just like, I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna be a fighter. So he shows up, doesn't recognize the MHC, he's killed. But this other little T cell here is like, I can do it. So he shows up, recognizes the MHC, and gets and passes, right? So moving on. Dun -dun. And here it comes moving down here. Now this terminology I don't really like. Recognize self-antigen. Really, the thing is bind too tightly to self-antigen. So if this guy comes down and grabs on, you ever have somebody shake your hand too long? And you shake their hand, they won't let go, and you're like, eh, okay. Well, that's kind of like this. If you really stick to this guy, they're going to kill you. If you go like this and go, you know what? I, I can recognize it, but I'm not going to bind to it. Uh, yeah, fail to, fail, this is bad terminology, failure to recognize binds too tightly to. So recognizing is binding too tightly to. So forget that recognize. I'm going to say you either, you either bind too tightly or you don't. And if you don't, you survive and you get to go on to, you know, bigger and better things. All right, that's video two. Sorry it was so long.